The reckless way we romped over those last few rocks was very foolhardy, but you'd need to be very phlegmatic not to get excited at such a time. The slope of the final ice cap above the rocks was easy and needed only a hundred steps which were quickly cut out. At 1.30 on Christmas Day, we stepped exultantly onto the highest pinnacle of the monarch of the Southern Alps. When travelling south of Christchurch, it seems as if the towering mountains of the Southern Alps stretch on along the horizon forever. The Southern Alps are 500 kilometres in length and form the backbone of the South Island. They are the major physical barrier dividing the east and west coasts. Ranges with peaks over 1,500 metres high comprise about 60% of the South Island. The Southern Alps were formed by the meeting of the Pacific and Australian tectonic plates. As the plates pushed against each other, exerting massive forces, they pushed the mountains upwards. The Southern Alps are among the most rapidly raising mountain ranges in the world, rising by approximately one centimetre per year. The Alps include 23 peaks over 3,000 metres high and have more than 3,000 glaciers or areas of permanent snow. As the mountains rise up, the heavy rainfall wears them down. The broad expanse of the Canterbury Plains was formed by eroded shingle being carried down from the mountains by the plains' broad rivers. The mountains have distinctive plants and animals. The flowers are all white or occasionally yellow, even when such species overseas are brightly coloured. They are home to the world's only mountain parrot, the kia, known for ripping rubber surrounds from car windows. They also have the world's only alpine geckos and cicadas. More recently, chamois from Austria and tar from the Himalayas have been introduced and now attract hunters from around the world. The Southern Alps contain some excellent ski fields, including Mount Hutt and Coronet Peak. Each year they attract thousands of skiers and snowboarders from around the world. The Alps are also New Zealand's premier mountaineering area. But during the 19th century, few New Zealanders were interested in the sport. This did not impress early mountaineer George Mannering. Fellows are such blockheads and cannot see any good in climbing mountains. The main colonial idea is to make money. But some young New Zealanders were interested in mountaineering. They got local blacksmiths to fashion ice axes and carried all their own gear and climbed without guides. In December 1894, three of them, Tom Fife, George Graham and Jack Clark, reached the summit of the country's highest peak, Aurangi Mount Cook, which stands over three and a half thousand metres high. The reckless way we romped over those last rocks was very foolhardy. But one would indeed need to be phlegmatic not to get a little excited on such an occasion. The slope of the final ice cap was easy and only required about 1,200 steps. At 1.30 on Christmas Day, we exultantly stepped onto the highest pinnacle of the monarch of the Southern Alps. 45 years later, a young beekeeper from Auckland called Edmund Hillary visited the Hermitage Hotel at the base of Auraki Mount Cook. It was a perfect day, and the great peaks seemed to tower over our heads. I looked on them with a growing feeling of excitement. The great rock walls, the hanging glaciers, and the avalanche-strewn slopes. And then, strangely stirred by it all, I felt restless for action. Hillary learnt the skills of mountaineering in the Southern Alps. They're not high by international standards, but the heavy snowfalls and uncertain weather make them a tough training ground. In May 1953, on the eve of Queen Elizabeth's coronation, Hillary, along with Sherpa Tenzing Norgay, became the first climber to conquer Mount Everest. As he returned down the mountain in triumph, Hillary said in words which would become immortal, We knocked the bastard off. Sir Edmund Hillary appears on the nation's $5 note, along with the mountain. 